TechTown has been around now 15 years? We just had our 15th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, so I'm looking at this space here that we're standing. Explain what we're looking at. Absolutely. So about five, six years ago, we blew open the first floor of TechTown, uh -huh. which is a old General Motors building. It's where the first Corvette was built for the 1953 Futurama. <laughs> Super cool. And uh, we created a public event and co-working space. Mm -hmm. So we have 13 conference rooms of varying shapes and sizes. You can get 180 people in if you want to have a big event. Mm -hmm. And then we have co-working, which is the, you know, five, six years ago, no one knew what that was. Now, mm -hmm. of course, everyone knows what co-working is. But we have about 450 members here. We are jammed. And they are all focused on Detroit. Uh, WeWork's actually opening up across the street. Mm -hmm. We actually called them and said, won't you come and move into our neighborhood? Neighborhood. And people said, is that co uh, competition? Said, Absolutely not. Because if you have offices and customers in Detroit and Tel Aviv and New York, mm -hmm. you should go to WeWork. But if you're focused on Detroit, you should be here. Come to us. And that's who these folks are. So a business incubator, I mean, I remember Biosciences, where I had a lab upstairs starting years ago when yeah. we first started talking about Tech Town. Um, where are we now in terms of the services and the, all kinds of businesses that you're helping and incubating here? Absolutely. So we started with a focus on uh, the life sciences, coming out of the university that does about two thirds of its research in the mm -hmm. health sciences and Henry Ford Health System. Uh, we very quickly expanded beyond that into other tech. Mm -hmm. And now we realized about seven or eight years ago that the same process you use to help a tech business helps somebody start a restaurant or a coffee shop or a gift store, or retail, light services, a barber shop. And so we're all over the city of Detroit. We're working in seven different neighborhoods among commercial corridors, um, helping to bring jobs and opportunity, but also amenities to current residents in those neighborhoods. So we, you know, we started with life sciences, but it's so much more. But I'll say this, we're still good at that. We still mm -hmm. know tech. So the Accelerate Michigan competition was last week. This is the biggest tech competition in the world. They give a million dollars in prizes. Mm -hmm. Both the first, first place and third place finishers were clients of ours. Really? What clients were they? Now you're going to get me in trouble no, not being able to okay. name That's all my okay. kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, you know, but talk to me about in the last five years, so many people have talked about starting new businesses in Detroit and that it is a place ripe for that kind of entrepreneurship. What businesses are you seeing more and more of coming through here and looking for help? So obviously we see a lot of mobility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Detroit is going to be the center of sort of the connected and autonomous world. So we're seeing a lot of that. We're seeing a lot of uh, related fields. So um, things like cybersecurity, we're seeing uh, tech, uh, technology around water and financial tech. Mm -hmm. You know, people think of uh, Detroit, they think of cars, but our, our biggest, second biggest employer in Quicken is a financial technology firm. So we're seeing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, uh, we're seeing people open up um, restaurants, coffee shops, and then a lot of uh, services, you know, and, uh, you know, barber shops, um, cleaning services, you know, things like that, because they're, they're things that are really market driven, that there's needs for it. Mm -hmm. And so what is it like for a lot of people to come in here to be able to network, really? I mean, you end up seeing people with other, other businesses and mm -hmm. other different things, and, and um, how do you think that has changed the way people are doing business around here by using a place like TechTown? So one of the reasons why we built this sort of public space, and everything here is public, so everybody, come on down, we want you here, mm -hmm. uh, that was intentional, because we wanted to create a critical mass where you are going to bump into someone every time you're here. Mm -hmm. yeah, one of our, our tenants upstairs says, coming to Tech Town is like a networking event every day. Mm -hmm. And it's true, because every time I have a meeting sitting out in the co-working space, I end up introducing someone to someone else that they should meet, who becomes a funder, a partner, an employee, a client, or some other relationship that, that's mutually beneficial for both of them. All right, so what's next? What are we looking at down the road in about a year or so? Well, we're all about removing barriers. We just started a program called Start Studio, mm -hmm. which we took a look at the tech ecosystem and said, what are the barriers for Detroit to get access to it, and we discovered things like they meet during the day. Uh, you, you can't bring your kids. There might be downtown where parking is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you might need a college degree. So we created Start Studio to remove those barriers. Uh, we did it at night and on weekends, parking is free, bring your kids, and we ended up having a first cohort, 90% people of color, 50% women, all tech and tech-enabled ideas, 40% over the age of 40, 20% over the age of 55. So we're going to, you know, that was a pilot, we're going to expand on that now because we found out some things that really work. And the next step is, one of the, one of the barriers is transportation. Mm -hmm. So we want to get out into the neighborhoods more. We're already working in some of those neighborhoods, but we want to create neighborhood workspaces mm -hmm. where people can get access to innovation and entrepreneurship services right near their own homes. Del uh, inclusion has to be delivered. Absolutely. There's a reason why we're always on the national best practices list of inclusion and diversity and economic development. And the reason why is, we actually want to be. That's, we're intentional about uh, the community that we serve uh, and making sure that everyone there is getting access. All right, congrats on 15 years. We can't wait for the next 15 and more. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kristen. Ned. It's good yep. to see you. Good to see you.